and hopefully now we're going live. Hello and welcome to my first live feed broadcast of the Peninsula Project simultaneously on YouTube and Facebook. Although on Facebook I'm not sure it's going out live until I actually finish recording the clip and post it. I'm using uh, the Facebook live feed for the first time not exactly sure how it, how it works and I'm not exactly sure if I'm allowed to go live live but I will be putting it up as soon as I finish broadcasting. So welcome again to the Peninsula Project which is a three year project to investigate, write about, photograph, film and broadcast the history of the small but very important Miura Peninsula and the effect of that history on the history of the wider world. So the Peninsula Project, so the Peninsula Project is a series of projects using photography, filmmaking, writing, live broadcasts to present the story of the to present the story of the Miura Peninsula. I'm very excited to be part of it. So I hope you join me. I apologise that I'm, I'm broadcasting inside today, but it looks like it's just about to rain. The weather's not been very kind to me. It's very dark, so it's also quite dark here in my impromptu recording studio. Thank you, and please bear with me. So this project will be broadcast simultaneously, regularly, on Facebook and YouTube. It will contain live feeds, pre-recorded clips, stories about the rich and interesting history of the Miura Peninsula using photography, video cameras and pros. And hopefully, as soon as safely possible, you'll see me out and about making the content for this project. So, in addition to working jointly with individuals and organisations interested in the history of the peninsula, ultimately I'll film myself as I travel around the peninsula, seeking out photo opportunities and filmmaking opportunities with a view to self-publishing a photograph and history book, Miura, about the peninsula, hopefully no later than the spring of 2023. Simultaneously, I'll be filming scenes for a YouTube documentary entitled The Miura Peninsula, the third in my Miura trilogy, following on from Kamakura, Rise and Fall of the Shoguns, and In Search of the Lost English Samurai. I'll be starting a documentary recording my own travails, trying to put this content together, and that documentary series will be called How Good Can I Get? as it watches me wrestle with equipment and technology in an effort to make this documentary program. The YouTube documentary, The, um, the Miura Peninsula itself, will start around autumn this year after I finish collating and curating my clips on the Lost English Summer Line. And I'll be putting the final touches to my YouTube Miura Peninsula clips and making a documentary series simultaneously with my self-published book, Miura, as I say, hopefully in the spring of 2023. So, with all that in mind, my weekly YouTube uploads will form part of this ongoing YouTube series, How Good Could I Get, chronicling my artistic and technical travails as I go around the peninsula, which with a bit of luck will show at least some improvement in my competence as a YouTube content maker with the knowledge I develop along the way. With 
the limited filmmaking gear that I currently now possess because it's part of my plan over the next two years not to buy any more equipment and just to make as good a documentary and photograph series as I can with the equipment I currently own which isn't that much. I have a camcorder, a couple of cameras, a sound recorder, a tripod, a smartphone and a flip phone, that's about it. But I'm confident that I can make a well-made and interesting series for you all to watch and enjoy. So, why have I chosen the Miura Peninsula as my topic? Well, firstly, a large number of key events in Japanese history, events that went on to shape world history, occurred right here. Miura is dwarfed. It's dwarfed by the two peninsulas that flank it. The Bio the Boso Peninsula to the east and the Izu Peninsula to the west. Nevertheless, the impact of the Miura Peninsula on Japanese history and on world history from about the 10th century becomes exponentially more immense than not only the two nearby peninsulas combined but more than probably any other area of similar size in Japan, or perhaps even the world, as will be revealed as the documentary unfolds. Yet Miura's effect on history cannot be fully understood or explained without also looking at the geological, geographical, historical and social features that are unique to this peninsula. That in many ways were the deciding factors and driving force behind Miura's huge impact on Japanese and world history. Secondly, I'll be using Miura as a framework on which to hang the history of the entire world which is what I'm planning to do. Or hang the history of the entire world using the framework of Miura, whichever you like. Because I think if there's no overall overarching plan, what would happen is I'd just go around the peninsula with my camera, filming things, pointing at things, and creating a set of clips that may serve to be of some interest to people with an interest in local history, but nothing more. My plan is somewhat more expansive. Every documentary series I've undertaken so far is inspired by famous and successful TV documentaries of the past in terms of layout and themes. My first series, Kamakura, Rise and Fall of the Shoguns, was inspired by a 1990s British Channel 4 documentary by John Roma entitled Byzantium, The Lost Empire. Like the documentary about Byzantium, I split my documentary about Kamakura and the Shoguns into four episodes. Foundation, Development, Zenith and Decline. If you're interested in that series, you can find it on YouTube. I'll post links later. My second series, In Search of the Lost English Samurai, which is soon to be wrapped up, is inspired by my fellow Mancunians, Michael Wood, series entitled In Search Of, which covers topics ranging from everything from the Trojan War to Anglo-Saxon England where Michael Wood actually visits sites associated with the historical figures and events he's investigating. Fascinating series that ran for two decades or more. Again, if you're interested in that series, I'll post links. So this new series of mine, The Miura Peninsula, the third in my Miura trilogy, is inspired in no small part by Andrew Marr's BBC History of the World, 
which he did several years ago. In it, he presented key events in world history that occurred in many diverse places to push the story along of human development. For example, using the Marxist model of human development, I presume, as his own framework, Andrew Marr describes key historical developments using specific events in world history. For example, the Viking expansion into Russia as his example of the great movements of people that occurred between the end of the classical age and the beginning of the medieval, the beginning of the medieval period. And he uses the final fall of the Japanese shogun itself and the fall of the samurai as his example, not only of Japan's entry into the modern world, but the entry of the whole world in the 17th, 18th and 19th centuries into the modern era. Again, if you're interested in that series, I'll post links. Although, whether or not it's on YouTube, I'm not sure. So, I'll be kind of using Andrew Marr's history of the world as a framework for my own history of the Muir Peninsula, but I'll be turning it on its head somewhat. Because, instead of using events from all over the world as specific examples of key points in human development, I'll be telling the story of worldwide human development by referring to places, people and events right here. Telling the history of the world without planning to set foot outside the Muir Peninsula. A plan I've been ruminating on for at least a couple of years, but in the current situation, where travel is a big no-no, I can still get started because I do live in the Muir Peninsula and I have absolutely tons of YouTube, absolutely tons of usable footage that I've already recorded. Nevertheless, when practical, I'm looking and hoping to collaborate with people far more knowledge far more knowledgeable than I am in regard to the history of the peninsula and I'm looking forward to that and I'm also looking forward to collaborating with other people who are involved in history making projects in the area. With all that in mind let me quickly mention some of the resources currently at my disposal in addition to my cameras, smartphone, the first smartphone I've ever owned, by the way, and which I've only been using for a week. My tablet, voice recorder, an internet connection. I'll be inspired by books that I've already read. Like, let me show you. Akemi Ono's Guide to Kamakura, which is not only a fascinating and in-depth guide, but the photography is excellent, and that inspires me to excel in the field of photography myself when making a book about the Miura Peninsula, which I intend to publish in about two to three years. Another book which has been, had a great influence on me is the century-old but still fantastic Kamakura Fact and Legend, written by the English-born Isomutsu, which was probably the first guidebook about Kamakura but which, he, but, but which goes into such a great depth that it hasn't ever really been matched since. That is an inspiration which I'll be using when I go out and about in the wider New York Peninsula and create my own history. A book I've been using for years, W.S. Morton's Japan, Its History and Culture, is something which, in addition to other Japanese history books that I own, I'll be referring back to at regular intervals. And I'm lucky that being near Yokosuka, in the heart of the Miura Peninsula, and working there, I have access to fantastic tourist information leaflets like this from the Tourist Information Office near Yokosuka Chuo Station, which I'll be going back to regularly. And in fact, I'll probably make a clip about because it's well worth knowing where it is and what kind of resources are available. 
resources like this fantastic pamphlet on the Mira Peninsula. I think I could make a clip just about this pamphlet and in the future I may well do. I don't want to go into too great a depth because I don't want to bore you with a long list of books and leaflets that you'll probably forget about as soon as I stop speaking. But I'd like to mention one more, one more book that is an inspiration to me. And it's not about the Mira Peninsula, it's actually about Kyoto. And it's called Kyoto, Seven Paths to the Heart of the City by Diane Durston with photos by Katsuhiko Mizuno, which is a fantastic book that shows you interesting but off the beaten path places in the ancient capital of Kyoto and accompanies it with it, accompanies it with absolutely first-rate photography. And this book is an inspiration to me that I intend to try and emulate when I publish my own book about the Mira Peninsula. This book, Kyoto, Seven Paths to the Heart of the City by Durston and Mizuno is one I highly recommend. So again, I will be posting information below. Right, I'm gonna wrap this up very soon. And uh, I'd just like to say thank you for joining me on my first live broadcast on Facebook. I'll also be posting this on YouTube. I'm sorry that I can only broadcast from home today because of course in the current crisis I can't go very far but I was planning on broadcasting from the roof of my apartment building but even that's not popular because as I speak I think it's starting to rain. So when this is uh, when this lockdown is over and we're all allowed out and about again, I am looking forward to getting a chance to talking to and learning from local scholars. And of course, anyone interested in the history of the area, in Miura itself, in Japan, and in the wider world. So, thank you for being kind enough to watch. I hope you come back at some point. Please leave a comment if you like, and. Uh, Thank you very much. Look forward to talking to you again soon. Arigatou gozaimasu. Yoroshiku onegaishimasu. All the best.